We're now going to be examining the trading partner ISA and GS options. Returning to the ISA identifier options, now as an inbound document, we will use the first value for each. So in this case, we are passed an identifier value of 8, which is the UCC communication code. Notice this is the only ISA identifier option containing a value. I'm now going to demonstrate exercise number 11 to configure the ISA and the GS options. This is in your book on page 37 to 39. All of the information for your X12 standard tab is contained in the first two lines of your EDI envelope. This is your ISA envelope and your GS envelope line. So we're going to go through and populate these fields and also we're going to take a look at where they are in our file. So the first one that we're using is ISA01 and ISA02. So this is ISA01, I'm highlighting it, and this is ISA02. ISA01 is 00, zero for us. In other words, we're not going to have any authorization information present. But we do have to take the value, which is an ISA02. We can copy this and paste it, or you can type it in. It is 10 zeros, and we're just going to place it in the ID line. Make sure there are no spaces before or after these values, because if there are, you will get an error message. The second one is the security information. Once again, we have no security information present, so therefore we're going to be using 10 zeros as the ID, and we can paste that information in. Scrolling down, we have our interchange ID. This is ISA05-7 and ISA06-8. Now, remember, we are receivers. We're going to be using the ISA05 and ISA06. So if I look over here, ISA05 is 08. If I come down here on my drop-down, 08 is the UCC communications number. So I'm going to select that. The next one is the number that's going to go into that. I'm going to select over here the UCC communication number and paste it. And that will be it for the ISA identification options. We'll come close this and we will go to the ISA version control. We're still going to be working on the ISA envelope, but we're going to query all the way over. The first thing we need to find for the ISA envelope is ISA 11, which is going to be our interchange standard ID. We're going to be using a U, which is right here, so we'll place a U in there. The next one, uh, which is right next to it, is the ISA interchange version and this is going to be 00401 so I'm just going to copy and paste that in. This is do we want an interchange acknowledge request it. We're not we have a zero in that field so we're going to not click on this. The next one is the test indicator and your options are T or P and in your file it will be T or P. P is the default and ours is a P. Finally, the last one is ISA 16. ISA 16 is the component separator. Our component separator is going to be a greater than symbol. So we are now done with the ISA version control options. We're now going to go down into the second line, which is the GS envelope, the GS envelope line, and this is going to be the GS version and control options. We have our GS application code, and we're going to be using GS02. This, by the way, is the exact same thing as our ISA. So as, I, as you notice, once I highlighted it, they came up on both lines. For the responsible agency code, which is GS7, ours is going to be an X. It can be T or X. T is the Transportation Data Coordinating Committee. X is the accredited standards. We'll be using accredited standards. And then the last one that we have is our GS version. Our GS version is going to be the field is going to be GS08. So we highlight this and it's going to be 004010. And now just make sure that you save it. 
Now it's your turn to complete exercise number 11 to configure the ISA and GS options in your book. This is in your book on page 37 to 39. When we return, we will be discussing EDI architecture and communication methods.